Hallelujah. We bless the name of the Almighty God for giving us another opportunity again uh, to be able to meet together like this on the front of Sec Ambassadors. Uh, we appreciate His name for all that has been doing in our lives in 2022. And it's a prayer that we continue to uphold us all in Jesus' name. And today, by the grace of God, we want to um, go into the book of Romans and by looking at this important topic, Romans 8, source of key nuggets for a victorious Christian life. Romans 8, source of key nuggets for a victorious Christian life. And our text shall be taken from the book of Romans chapter 8, verse 1, verse 6, and verse 14. Romans chapter 8, from verse, verse 1, verse 6, and verse 14. By the grace of God, we are taking the part 1 of this message, and we hope that by the grace of God, if the Lord is in this coming, I will take the part 2 and the part 3 in subsequent Sundays. Let us pray. Everlasting Father, we thank you for all that you have been doing in our lives, even in this year. We appreciate you for the gift of the word of God that you have given us, even for the gift of Romans chapter 8. Father, we say be exalted in Jesus' name. We pray that as we go into um, the study of this particular chapter in this episode, we pray you will bless us in Jesus' name. Let our lives not remain the same. Um, thank you because you have answered. We pray that the Holy Spirit will fill us. And at the end, let us all be blessed. For in Jesus' mighty name we have prayed. Amen. So like I mentioned to us earlier, um, by the grace of God, we are considering this important uh, topic, Romans chapter 8, source of key nuggets for a victorious Christian life. Um, in this episode, we are focusing on three out of the ten uh, verses we'll be considering in this particular uh, series, and I pray that the Lord himself will bless us in Jesus' name. Um, as a way of introduction, I'd like us to, like, I want to believe we all know that the Bible itself is a unique and wonderful book. Uh, with different promises of God. If you look at um, from Genesis to Revelation, looking at these different books that we have in, the, in, the, in, that, in that holy book, we we'll see that God himself has helped us as women uh, to be able to live a virtuous Christian life. And right from the fall of Adam, we learned how God has uh, initiated the redemption plan you know, making the uh, Lord Jesus Christ to come to the world to die for all of us. And then now we also use different apostles and like Apostle Paul to be a blessing to Christianity. And it's our prayer that in the name of Jesus, all that all this effort that God has made uh, will not be uh, will not go in vain our lives in Jesus' name. And like I mentioned to us earlier, the book itself, I mean the Bible, uh, starts with the Genesis and of course Genesis from Genesis to Malachi we have the Old Testament and then we also have the New Testament that is from Matthew um, to Revelation. Out of this particular book, we out of these 66 books of the Bible, uh, we have this book of Romans, uh, which is filled with different instructions and promises of God for a victorious Christian life. If you are yet to study the book of Romans, I want to encourage you uh, to do so because it will bless your life. Uh, particularly as a Christian, and I pray that in the name of Jesus, all the blessings written in this book uh, will be a portion in Jesus' name. And generally, this book of Romans has been referred to as the constitution of Christianity, it has been referred to as the cathedral of Christian faith, as well as the Christian manifesto. And the Christian manifesto, so that means that if uh, you really want to know more about the lifestyle of a Christian, then the book of Romans is a more straight. I want to encourage us also. And read this book, or if I've read it before, maybe you should read it again. And I want to believe that you'll be richly blessed in Jesus' name. And the book is also referred to as uh, a collection, or let me see, summary of Christian doctrine. Um, perhaps you've been wondering what, how, how should we behave as Christians? What, what are those things that uh, form uh, uh, the, the principal character of a Christian? Then this book is a must read for you. It will help you to be able to know our doctrine, what we believe as Christians, uh, how we should live our lives. The necessary guidance to be able to uh, live with us in this life. I want to encourage you uh, once again to read this book because it will be a blessing to you. And of course, even as a family, we can study together so that all of us can be blessed. And I pray that that will be a portion in Jesus' name. Um, but then in this episode, our focus is on uh, chapter 8. And like I mentioned towards earlier, there are 10 verses that we want to, uh, let me say, enjoy in these in this verses in this episode. Uh, but then for today, we will only be focusing on three out of this thing. And I believe that our lives will not remain the same. Please um, sit tight. Tighten your belt and enjoy these three verses from the ten that will be considered together today in Jesus' name. 
Amen. So, um, the very first uh, verse we want to enjoy from this important chapter, Romans chapter 8, is the first verse itself, Romans chapter 8, verse 1. Um, for this 10 nuggets, or let me say 10 verses, I will focus on using the New King James Version. So, please um, follow follow me as we enjoy the best. Uh, we'll get the best out of this chapter. And God of heaven bless us in Jesus' name. So Romans chapter 8, verse 1, and the first nugget or the first verse we are considering says, There is therefore now no condemnation to those who are in Christ Jesus, who do not walk according to the flesh, but according to the Spirit. That means that as Christians, as a genuine child of God, you are, can never be condemned. In as much as uh, you have not working according to the flesh, in as much as uh, you have allowed yourself to be led by the Spirit of God, then I want to assure you that you can never be condemned. What does this mean? This means that um, as far as you have allowed yourself to be led, as far as you have allowed yourself to be directed by the Spirit of God, then you are sure of a, a, a good ending. So no matter what you are going through, I want you to know that God is with you. Um, I don't want you to feel bad. Maybe you have obeyed God in carrying out a particular command, and maybe um, what you are saying now is not what you thought it, it, it should give you. I want you to be encouraged because you can never be condemned. The Bible is so. The Bible has has has, has, has made it clear that there is now no condemnation to those who are in Christ Jesus. So that means that as far as we remain in Christ Jesus doing all that Christ commands us to do as Christians, obeying him, following his instructions, then I want to assure you that your end, I mean, all that you are doing will end in his grace in Jesus' name. A second nugget and the second verse I want to consider is Romans chapter 8 verse 6. It's a very important one. I would like us to um, please take our time to memorize it and not to forget. He says, for to be carnally minded is death, but to be spiritually minded is life and peace. In the world we live now, um, even as Christians, many times we get carnally minded. Many times we you know the things happening around us sometimes carries us away and from the fact that we need to be spiritually minded. And that's why this part or let me say this verse or this nugget is very important for us to always remember that as Christians, God expects you and I to be spiritually minded. And when we are carnally minded, that's where the, the cares of this world, the things of this world, the pride of life, all of these things will you know, be driving us. And of course, they will lead us to nowhere and eventually they will lead to death. I pray that that will not be our portion in Jesus' name. And so, but then when we choose, when we decide to be spiritually minded, when we when we make all that, you know, interest us, all that we run after to be things of God, things of the Spirit, then we are sure of Two important things. The first one is life. And of course, we all know that Jesus Christ himself is life. And then we're also sure of peace. And then again, um, Bible makes us understand in Isaiah chapter 9, verse 6, that Jesus Christ is the Prince of Peace. So that means that when we are spiritually minded, we are the, the we, we become you know a carrier of Jesus. We begin to live that Jesus kind of life that everywhere we go to, you know, people can actually see Jesus in us, and which actually portrays the fact that we are actually Christians. And I pray that the name of Jesus give God Himself and uh, give us that grace uh, to be spiritually minded in Jesus. There are a lot of things we will enjoy by being spiritually minded. We say that um, people today they have IPP, you know, they are. IBP just because of what they are considering, you know, things happen around them, they'll be bothered. But then when we are spiritually minded, we can, you know, have faith in God. We can put our trust in Him. We can know that our God will always come true for us. And I pray that no matter um, the situation that you are going through, God Himself will encourage you. He will help your faith and will help us all to stand in Jesus' name. But then we should not forget that carnally mindedness will eventually lead to death or will lead to death. But then when we are spiritually minded, we are sure of two important things. We have life. And not just having this life, we have it more abundantly. And then again, we also have peace, peace of mind, even in the midst of storms. I pray that God will help us to be able to uh, be spiritually minded in Jesus' name. Then the third verse we are continuing to do, the third nugget is a popular one, Mark chapter 8, verse 14. It says, For as men that are led by the Spirit of God, these are the sons of God. Are you, the question is, brothers and sisters, have you allowed yourself to always be led by the Spirit of God? If you are not led by the Spirit of God, then you cannot uh, say clearly that you are a child of God. Because that makes us understand in this, in this verse that for as many as are led by the Spirit of God, they are 
the sons of God. Maybe I should even ask us, the last decision you took, are you sure you are led before you took that decision? Brothers and sisters, there's no way we can live a, a, a triumphant Christian life without following Jesus, without following the Holy Spirit, without aligning ourselves to be led by the Holy Spirit. So that's why I, this particular nugget is important for us to know that as Christians, we should always try, we should always ensure, we should always, you know, submit ourselves to the leading of the Holy Spirit. And God himself will help us in Jesus' name. So what we are seeing is the fact that there is no way we can call ourselves a true child of God. We can call ourselves true children of God and then we are not led by the Holy Spirit. It is not possible because God will always lead his own. If you are a genuine child of God, if you are a genuine Christian, then the Holy Spirit will lead you. And But then we also need to understand this fact that when we obey the leading, that is where we can have you know, further directions. If at first um, God is telling me to do something and I refuse to do it, he tells me the second time I refuse to do it, then he will not bother you know, telling me other times. But then if I'm used to obeying, then I will have more, more direction, more instructions and more leadings. And so we want to believe that by the grace of God, um, from this verse, you and I will make our determination to ensure that we are always led by the Spirit of God. And not just being led alone, that we are always, you know, obeying, trusting God, you know, obeying the commands as as we are led in the name of Jesus. So, by the grace of God, these are the three verses we want to um, study today, we want to enjoy, and so I believe that you will put them into practice, Romans chapter 8, verse 1, Romans chapter 8, verse 6, and then Romans chapter 8, verse 14. We strongly believe that by the time we put these three verses into our practice in our lives, our lives will not remain the same. In conclusion, uh, we need to understand the fact that a victorious Christian life can be achieved. It can be achieved when we allow ourselves to be full, filled with the Holy Spirit. And if you look at the three verses we are considered today, um, they both you know, add this, this, this part of the Holy Spirit. Romans 8 verse 1 says, according to the Spirit. Romans 8 verse 6 says, to be spiritually minded. Romans 8 verse 14 says, led by the Spirit of God. So that means that as Christians, there is no way we can live triumphant in this life without that part of the Holy Spirit, without the Holy Spirit touch. And I pray that the Holy Spirit Himself will fill us afresh today in Jesus' name. So what we are saying in essence is the fact that the Brazilian citizen life is that that can be it can be achieved by when we are filled with the Holy Spirit, and of course when we allow ourselves to be directed uh, by this third person of the Trinity. And it's our prayer that in the name of Jesus, as we go into the rest of the year, we, we, God will help us to be able to enjoy this uh, leading of the Holy Spirit and to submit ourselves to obey these leadings in Jesus' name. And so, um, if you are listening at this time and you are here to give your life to Jesus, we want to encourage you that uh, the best time to do that is now. Remember the second um, verse that we talked about, Romans chapter 8, verse 6, where the Bible makes us understand the fact that to be carnally minded is dead, is dead, but to be spiritually minded is life and peace. So what that verse is saying is that if you are yet to give your life to Jesus, definitely there's no way you'll be able to gain eternity with God. There's, that means um, coming to this world will just be a place where you have just only come to see what is happening in the world and then your eternity is not guaranteed. It's not a wise decision, my brother and sister. So that's why, by the grace of God, on this platform, we want to encourage you and to give your life to Jesus. If you haven't done so, we want to encourage you to uh, have this, this relationship with the creator of the universe. We want to encourage you to have this, this work in this life with the Lord Jesus. We want to encourage you to also be a partaker of the Holy Spirit direction. And that's why we want to encourage you, if you are yet to give a life to Jesus, to do that now. And if you want to do that, we can just repeat after me. So, Lord Jesus, I thank you for coming to the world to die for my sins. I pray the fact that I'm a sinner. I, 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 I pray that today you forgive me of my sins. Please wash me with your blood. And from today, let me be filled with the Holy Spirit. Uh, give me the grace to be able to obey the leading of the Holy Spirit. And please, on the last day, help me to be part of those that will reign with you eternally. Write my name in the book of life. Help, help me in this Christian race. Thank you, everlasting Father. For in Jesus' name we have prayed. Amen. If I made that prayer, I want to congratulate you for making the best decision anybody can ever make, which is that decision of accepting Jesus as our Lord and Savior. So we want to encourage you to continue in this part. Um, to further you know, help you, we want to encourage you to join a Bible-believing, a Bible-teaching church around you. Just find and try and find one close to your to where you stay and then fellowship with them. We also want to encourage you to be a man and woman of prayer. 
please ensure that you pray often because prayer itself is a way of you know, communicating with our Heavenly Father. And then lastly, we also want to encourage you to uh, get a Bible and uh, so that you can continue to read this, the scriptures yourself and then you know what God is telling you to do part time. As I pray that the Lord is able to bless you in Jesus' name. And if you still need further counseling or further sub spiritual support, you can please contact us on the phone numbers of our screen. Or you can even send us an email and at um, and of course, our email address is sec.ambassadors at gmail.com. It's our belief that God Himself will bless you and your life will never remain the same in Jesus' name. And so, before we go, finally, we would like to um, make this prayer. And the prayer is our dear Heavenly Father, please help us to always trust and obey the Holy Spirit guidance. And we pray in the name of Jesus. Father, we pray, O oh God, that you will help us. Even in this 2022, help us to be a child of oh God, your child. Your own, to be part of those children of yours that that always trust and obey the Holy Spirit God. And we pray that Lord you help us. We pray you strengthen us. We pray you encourage us in the name of Jesus. We pray that all of these that we have seen to today, they will not go in vain in our lives in Jesus. In this book of Romans, the three verses that we have read talking about the, the place of the Holy Spirit in, 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 our, in our lives as Christians, we pray that we'll see the effect in Jesus' name. Our lives will be that which pleases you. Our lives will be that which gives glory unto you glory unto you in the name of jesus thank you everlasting father for in jesus mighty name we have prayed amen we want to appreciate you for joining us this afternoon in studying the book of romans of course we didn't start from chapter one we just went straight to um chapter of four, chapter eight and like i said that this message itself is in three parts by the grace of god and uh, we have talked about the first part today so we hope to continue next sunday if the lord jesus time is coming so we want to encourage you to please Go through that book of Romans, enjoy this chapter 8, so that together we can continue to grow together as second coming of Christ and Barcelona. If you also yet to subscribe to our channel, please do so, and God of heaven will bless you in Jesus. And so to meet again next Sunday, if the Lord Jesus time is coming, we want to wish you all a very wonderful Sunday, and please have a wonderful week. God bless you.